Well, hello, ladies and gentlemen. It is Impacting Life 24-7 with your host, C.L. King. We're coming to you live from the High Definition Studios here in Impactville. And tonight's a very special night for me. It, it, it's a special night for me professionally, and it's a special night for me personally. Because sometimes, you know, God will bring people into your life for a season, and then God will bring people into your life to season you. Think about that. And being a former Marine, it wasn't common for me to be able to have opportunities to talk to a colonel. It certainly wasn't it certainly wasn't common for me to have an opportunity to talk to a 36-month combat veteran. It wasn't common for me to have sit-down conversations with a medical physician. It wasn't common for me to have conversations with a national wrestling champ. And it wasn't common for me to be able to talk to a humanitarian and a man of God that is literally with his story changing the world from coast to coast. Dr. Skip Mondragon, I know you all know him. He is not only a sponsor of this program, but he's also a sponsor of of my encouragement. And Dr. Skip Mondragon was a 36-month Army veteran, 26 years, retired colonel, world champion wrestler. And he came face-to-face, ladies and gentlemen, with this thing called depression. His show, the first time we had him on back in early part of the year, was so profound that we said, Doctor, we got to do a two-night series. It's just, it's just too much. I don't know how we're going to finish this show in 30 minutes tonight. We'll just cross our fingers and let God help us. But Dr. Skip Mondragon is a, is a man on a mission from Texas that he's saying, listen, I want to bring to light. I want to illuminate this whole thing about depression and help men and women alike learn that wrestling depression isn't for wimps. And he gives us keys and strategies to successfully navigate these feelings that happen. So I'm asking you to welcome to our virtual studios, the man, the myth, and the legend, Dr. Skip Mondragon. Welcome, doctor. Thank you, Chris. I'm <laughs> delighted to be back. Well, the, doctor, it's so it's so good to have you back. And you know, we were talking in the pre-show how fast time flies. Mm. And I said, doctor, it's, you were here in March, and it just seems like, man, we, we got to get you back more often. Uh, but that's because he's on Texas time, and everything is bigger in Texas. So, you know, <laughs> <laughs> doctor, we're going to get right to it because I want people to get them. You are a, a, a creature of value. So I want to get right to it. Um, you know, if you could just give us a quick background of, of your career, of your marriage, kind of get us, get our folks who've never met you before caught up on the present day Dr. Skip Mondragon in two minutes. Thank you, Chris. Well, I attended medical school at Old Roberts University, did residency in Northeast Ohio, in Canton, Ohio, then came on active duty in the Army in 1989, served in a variety of posts, uh, finished out my career at Eisenhower Army Medical Center, uh, Center in Augusta, Georgia, and it was there in my 25th year that I began to experience symptoms of depression. Been married to an amazing woman by the name of Sherry for 41 years. We've raised five children, all productive and hardworking adults, and none have come back to roost. <laughs> oh, that's a good thing. <laughs> we have five uh, grandchildren. And we are blessed. My wife is an author. She's had one published uh, novel. It's done extremely well. Her second is in the editing phase. It's back with the publishers and she's doing the background for her third. Um, my pat one of my passions is certainly amateur wrestling. I've been involved with the sport since I was 13 years old. So well over 50 years. Uh, I speak. I write, and I'm enjoying life, Chris. 
Well, thank you, Dr. Skip. And uh, for those of you who would like to connect with Dr. Skip Mondragon, we have his website up. And, and I, I love your new refined website. Some, some mutual friends of ours uh, helped uh, get that website refined. And you can go to transformate, transformedtoughguys.com, right? Transformedtoughguys.com. And uh, you, can, you can connect with Dr. Skip on a multitude of levels. Of course, his book, which we will talk about tonight. In fact, hold on, ladies and gentlemen. I'm right here in our new remodeled studios. And right behind me, <laughs> right behind me is the book. Of course, I have it, doctor. You didn't think I wouldn't have it. Uh, wrestling depression is not for wimps. Lessons learned from an amateur wrestler's fight or to triumph over depression. And so I have it here in the studios. I have my signed autograph copy, and you can get one uh, in a multitude of places. Tell us where we can get the book, doctor. You can get it from Amazon. You can get it from Google Books, you can get it from Barnes & Noble. Those would be some of the places you can get it. Yes, and uh, but if you want an autograph copy, you're not going to get this one because I'm holding this one close. <laughs> um, and so, Dr. Skip, you know, one of the things that, of course, Dr. Skip just finished a couple months ago, and we were proud to be uh, kind of semi in the background of this. Dr. Skip just finished a TEDx talk on this very topic of, of his life story. You would think a 36-month combat veteran, an Army colonel, uh, which which is an 06 for those of you wondering, um, a, a man with with great respect and admiration from the community at large, would have the world by the tail. But Dr. Skip really helps us to see in his story about depression, his own personal battle, uh, what he went through and how you can make it through it. So Dr. Skip, you were going to your office, you closed the door. And you shut the blinds. Pick us up there. Shut the blinds. Turn off the phones. Lock the door. And crawled under my desk. And curled up in a fetal position. And for four hours, I struggled with these questions. Skip, what are you doing? Skip, how did you get here? What happened? You're a tough guy. And for four hours, I'm asking myself those questions. But then I began to put the pieces together. And finally, after four hours, I understood. Oh, you're depressed. Go get help. And then I crawled out from under that desk with a little flicker of hope. And later that day, a clinical psychologist diagnosed me with major depression. Mm. Let me ask you this, Skip, uh, Dr. Colonel Skip Mondragon. What, was it was it because, you know, men, because you talk about it, um, we're tough, right? We 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 relish in our accomplishments. We're the defenders of the home. Was it hard for you to go and seek help? And if it wasn't, that's fine. But what would you say to those men who feel like they don't need to go seek help. They're just going to right. tough it out. Right. Well, that, that toughness that I had, this tough guy attitude, I was a tough guy. You talked about my accomplishments and so forth. And that tough guy persona, that's what contributed and helped me get into so much trouble because I was used to just pushing through. In wrestling, we have a term, gut it out, no matter how hard it is, no matter how much your lungs burn, no matter how much your muscles ache, you just keep pushing and pushing. But that mentality, the harder I pushed, in this case, the worse I got. And the more I just circled down into that deep, dark pit of depression. Because I had that tough guy mentality. I, I didn't have the insight to step back and say, wait a minute, what's going on? Right. Even as a physician, uh, it, it put blinders on me. Yeah. But finally, I was so beat down beat up and broken that i just had nothing left and i understood that under that desk finally after four hours and at that point it didn't matter to me who knew getting help i knew i needed help i knew i was a wounded warrior at that point and that i had to get help and so 
for me at that point, there, there was no other alternative. I had to get help. Wow. And, and again, for those of you who are just joining us on Impacting Life 24-7, we're joined by our guest, retired Army colonel and physician, Dr. Uh, Skip Mondragon. We call him Skip, but he's actually Dr. Donald G. Skip Mondragon. TransformedToughGuys.com is where you can uh, connect with Dr. Skip Mondragon and also connect with him about getting a copy of this book in your hand, Wrestling Depression is Not for Wimps. This is lessons learned from an amateur wrestler's fight to triumph over depression. And we have to realize that depression comes in many forms. So, doctor, what would you say, and and I've never asked you this question before, but was it many causes or a singular root cause that you that you felt led to this this crash in depression in your life? It it was many causes, Chris. It was the accumulation of trauma from childhood, uh, deaths in the family, uh, things that happened that were losses that I had not processed as I was growing up. Patients that I lost in, in medicine, difficult things that happened in my immediate family as an adult, uh, things that you experience in the military. Uh, you lose patients, you treat uh, individuals, soldiers that are mangled and burned, uh, soldiers that you had pronounced dead that have died by suicide, all these things, but because of the busyness and the fact that you've got to continue the mission, you, you don't take time to process. So all these things, and then it was the perfect storm in those last 18 months or so that I was in the Army, had not taken time to get surgeries done that I needed to take time to get done. And so these surgeries that I was getting done disrupted my whole routine. Some things were going on in my department that I took personal uh, uh, blame for that I couldn't have done anything about that were going to impact patient care and the graduate medical education, re-educating our residents and medical students. And, and so all these things, plus now the stress, we're getting ready to retire from the Army and the move and what's yeah. going to happen after the Army. All It was this perfect storm. Perfect storm. And so it wasn't just one thing. It was many things. Yeah. And, you know, again, ladies and gentlemen, our friend and uh, sponsor of this program, Dr. Skip Mondragon from Texas, uh, one of the thing, one of the chapters that that really has stood out to me in the book that you guys can get, Wrestling Depression is Not for Wimps. Um, he deals with a chapter called Prevention Always Trumps Rehab. That's chapter uh, eight. The Prevention Always Trumps Rehab. So, Doctor, I wanted to, you, uh, you know I'm always going to keep you mixed up a little bit, Doctor. So give us an insight into, peel back the onion a little bit on that chapter, Prevention Always Trumps Rehab. Thank you, Chris. And I sure enjoyed writing that chapter. And uh, let me just give you a quick example. Physically, what would happen to me, I had uh, injured a hamstring that I had torn uh, wrestling with the, the, the high schoolers. I was in excellent shape. I had had my national, won my national championship, but uh, I was working out with them. It was a freak accident, tore my hamstring. Uh, it was, it was a, a tear. It wasn't a major tear, but it was enough that it set me back a matter of months. And that was healing and it had pretty much healed. But then I was practicing judo with uh, an officer that uh, was a uh, taught judo. So I was playing judo with them. And what happened? Uh, he, he said, practice this foot sweep while he was working with some others. And being a tough guy, being the wrestler, it's like, okay, I'm going to practice this foot sweep, practice this foot sweep. Practice his foot sweep. I began to feel a twinge in the hamstring. Well, I want to look like a wimp. I don't want to, yeah, there, I'm the wrestler. Right. So Brandon say, practice foot sweep. Practice foot sweep. So I, I began to feel the twinge in the other hamstring. Well, don't want to look like a wimp. Practice in foot sweep. Practice. After practice, you know, I got in there in the locker room after my shower. Ooh, my hamstrings are sore. I got home and like, ah, oh, they're really sore. Before bed, oh my God. Gosh, my hamstrings are killing me. The next two weeks, I could hardly sit down or stand up. Hot baths. My, my hamstrings are too sore to massage. Tylenol. 
Motrin, and oh, I was just miserable. But that hamstring that I had previously torn, it took over almost nine months to fully heal Jeez. because I didn't prevent. At the first twinge, it should have right. been, no, nope, that's that's no enough. more right. practicing the foot sweep. That's enough. Right. But no, my ego got in the way. Jeez. So this idea of prevention always trumps uh, uh, rehab is the idea of taking inventory. Right of looking, where are we at? Where are our emotional stores at? Where are our mental stores at? Where are our physical stores at? What are our relationships like? And are, what are our spiritual stores like? And where do we need to step back and replenish? Mm. Because if we don't, all these things are going to ebb and then we're going to be in trouble. Something has to give. You know, Dr. Skip, and it, wasn't, it wasn't until my kids moved out on their own that they understand what I used to tell them. I used to say a stitch in time saves nine. And it wasn't until they had to get out on their own that they really, <laughs> that they really oh, Dad, I figured out what you was talking about. Yeah, just do it. Do it up front. Do it up front to prevent a, a greater catastrophe. Make sure you get that oil change every yes, five thousand. Right, <laughs> stitching time saves <laughs> nine. Don't ask me to come repair your engine. I can pay for your oil change. I can't get you a new engine. I don't know. You're talking to the wrong guy. So again, ladies and gentlemen, we're blessed to have our friend, our colleague, our uh, one of our sponsors, one of our. A corporate sponsors, Dr. Skip Mondragon, Wrestling Depression is Not for Wimps. You can get, Greg, can you put uh, one of the links to uh, where you can get his book at on Amazon? Um, Depression is Not for Wimps, Lessons Learned from an Amateur Wrestler's Fight to Triumph Over Depression. And so, you know, one thing that, that you said is that you had to go, and I, I imagine, you know, us being men of faith, you know, it's like you're, you're in a position of leadership, Right. You're a colonel. And, you know, the, usually with colonels, the buck stops with the colonel till you get to the flag officer guys. Right. And so the hum, I guess, you know, the humility factor of saying, hey, look, I need help. How did how did you it, it just was clear to you that you needed to make that decision. Right. Well, I, I, I think what I'm looking for you to do is, doctor, help those that don't know even how to take the first step. They know there's a problem, but they're wrestling with, you know, embarrassment and all the other feelings for reaching out for help. Help us through right. that. Right. And, and what I tell men is to understand that we all need help from time to time. Right. And asking for help, admitting you need help and asking for help doesn't mean that you're weak, that you're a wimp, or you're less than a man. It means that you're human. That's what it means. And that doing so doesn't diminish you. In fact, in many ways, it elevates you. Because I shared my story before the entire hospital staff before I left Eisenhower. Wow. In fact, I did it in a morning session, an afternoon session. At, uh, before the hospital staff, I had asked the hospital commander if I could have that opportunity and afterwards, a lot of people came up to me and they said, thank you for the courage to share. That was my story, but that was my brother's story. That right. was my father's story. Right. I've been there. I know somebody who's been there. Thank you for having the courage to share that. Right. I had one officer who was a member of my staff, and uh, this was maybe a year or two ago. You know, I've been retired since 2014, and I think he retired about two years ago. But he, but he mentioned something in a post, I think might have been on LinkedIn, and he said, that was one of the most courageous things I've ever seen. Mm. And so the, the willingness to step up and say, I need help, doesn't diminish you. And so don't worry about what others are going to say. You owe it to yourself, you owe it to your family, and you owe it to your friends. If yes. you're struggling, go get help. Absolutely. And Greg, thank you so much for putting the additional links up to get a copy of Dr.'s book, Dr. Skip Mondragon, retired Army Colonel, 36-month combat veteran, 26-year Army veteran. 
Um, wrestling depression is not for wimps. And I want you to know, uh, doctor, because we just got right into it, that Greg says hello. The gunny says hello all hey, the way from hello, the 500 yard line. He, he's, he's, <laughs> he misses that he couldn't meet, be here with you today, but he, he always comes in and takes care of our, our live audience. So, uh, yeah, get it, get your copy of this book because here's the reality. Um, is there, and this is what I want to ask you, doctor, is there a component of denial that accompanies depression? Oh my gosh. Yes. I think especially among men. Let's hear it. We, we are, we are good deniers. Yeah. You know? Oh yeah. I don't need help. I'm good. Oh yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. You know, I, I was, like I said, I had blinders on. No, no, no. I just need to work harder. I need to just push through this. Yeah. Right. Right. And, and so, so yes, absolutely. We are very good. Meanwhile, we're dying on the inside. We're just struggling. Yeah. And I, you know, our family may see it, our spouses may see it, our kids. And depression is an equal opportunity disease. It, it doesn't matter about the age. It doesn't matter about your education level. It doesn't matter about your uh, occupation. It doesn't yeah. matter about your status. Yeah. It, it doesn't matter about your ethnic group, your religious group, uh, any of these things. Where you live, you know, you might live in this neighborhood, that neighborhood. It doesn't matter. It is an equal opportunity disease Whew. man that's powerful and and dr skip mondragon dealt with this and and it came crashing in on him and during his army career during the heart, height of his army career and uh he had to he had to get help and you know what i've realized is that that doctor i'll just be i'll be transparent with my audience and with you because you're my friend um writing my book who ate my brownie um, it required me to even get help myself. Now here, I carried this story for 47 years, doctor, right? And wondering why I had, even though people look and say, you're a great speaker, you do this, you're a humanitarian, blah, blah, blah. But this book really unearthed some things that I hadn't dealt with. Not in 47 years, doctor. And... The, the, I had to humble myself because I said, if I'm going to be everything that my family needs me to be, then I got to get help too, you know? And so, and, and I want to speak because you and I are both men of faith. We're ministers. You're a pastor. You, you preach the gospel. You went to Oral Roberts University. I see you represent the shirt there. <laughs> but sometimes, and I've heard this, we may have talked about this before, doctor, but sometimes in the faith community, I've heard I heard this growing up that if you went and got professional help, that maybe your faith in God was a little lacking. Help us understand how it, it's help us understand that, doctor, that even though you still love God, you might need professional help for depression. Thank you for raising that that issue, Chris. I, I, I love that. At ORU, we had this uh, philosophy at Oral Roberts University, and that was the idea of bringing the best of faith and combining it with the best of medicine. Yeah. To bring healing. And think about it. We don't, we don't hesitate to use technology. I mean, we could be walking every place we could still be using a wagon to get places <laughs> right. you know, by, right. by horse you know pulled by horses but what we get in a car yeah we get in a we get in a jet to to go across the right. country right doing these things and we don't give it a second thought right oh, that's the way we do it but uh, if you have a broken leg you go and you get it set and get the cast and so forth if you have a ruptured appendix, you have it dealt with. So why is that anything less than when you're struggling with an illness like a mental health illness? Right. That it's any less faith to say, oh, I'm going to get help. And so I think there's this idea that you, you lack faith. Oh, brother, you just need to pray harder. Oh, there must be something wrong. You must have some sin in your life. <laughs> oh, you know, something. I've missing. heard it all. There, there's <laughs> all these things that people want to heap on you. Right. Oh, 
you got that broken leg. Oh, brother, you just need to pray. <laughs> oh, brother, you just need to, to get rid of that sin in your life. That's why you're, you've got that broken leg. That's right. why your appendix is ruptured. Right. You see that disconnect there? You're right. Doctor. And so the, the, there are certain elements of the faith community, and that's that uh, incongruency. Yeah. And so I've always maintained that, yes, God has uh, faith. We never need to discount faith. Right. God can do the miraculous. Yes. And there's times he does the miraculous. And I pray. Yes, I've always prayed for my patients. But he's also given us advances. He's yeah. given us a reason. And he didn't expect us to turn off our brains and not use what's available to us. That's right. And so I, I believe in therapy. I still take medicine. I still see a therapist to maintain that even kill, to make sure I'm healthy. Yeah. And I'm grateful for it. And I still pray. Honestly. <laughs> Imagine that, huh? <laughs> yeah, because look, doctor, you know, the, the, the vicious, the dreaded boogeyman COVID that swept through the country. I prayed for when I when I contracted it, I prayed, but I still took uh Mucinex. You know what I'm saying, doctor? Because <laughs> I needed to breathe. <laughs> and and that's that's important because um, you know, recognizing th- that our faith is 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 not diminished because we seek help uh is important and and I wanted to, I really wanted to stress that because there's some people in the church you know depression is in the church too doctor oh yes uh, you, absolutely. you know what I mean yeah and absolutely and a lot of people just like men especially tough guys yeah. don't want to admit there's plenty of people sitting in the pews because they feel they will be uh denigrated because they will be told these things just pray more yeah brother. pray more sister you know examine your heart where's the sin in your life yeah yeah where's you just got to have more faith they're, yeah. they're they, they because they've seen maybe others told this right and they don't want to be told this so they suffer in silence yeah that's powerful shame w- on us yes in the body of christ yes when that's how we treat each other man that's powerful i would like to just greet everybody my cousin all the way up there in ohio and uh nisi jordan who finished her book it's back there on the shelf uh behind closed doors i'd like to say hello to my sister uh dr skip she's joining us she's online my sister melinda diane jackson she is in this she's in my book doctor because she went through some of mm-hmm. the same hells that i went mm-hmm. through and i mentioned her several times throughout the book because she she can verify the you know because some people will read this and they'll be like there's no way you guys went through that and melinda lived through it and uh, melinda's a a beautiful strong powerful black woman with five amazing young men and she's doing a phenomenal job so she don't come on she don't come in the live much doctor but when she does i want to tell her that i love her of course um mike black says hello uh, he couldn't be with us tonight, but uh, you know he loves you, Colonel. And uh, I'm just going to take a few more minutes because I want you guys to know that it's not – the Impact in Life 24-7 is a place. We call it the Cathedral of Resources. And, Doctor, you're a coach, too. You help people, uh, y- you know, give them practical, realistic, tangible ways to navigate through this. Obviously, it's detailed in your book, Wrestling Depression is Not for Wimps. Lessons learned from a amateur wrestler's fight to triumph over depression. And there is the other side. See, when people see my subtitle, doctor, they think when I said, no matter the adversity, you still can make it. That means, okay, well, it's, you just, it's cut and dry. <laughs> That's it. That's it. Cut the cake. We're good. That, that, does, not, that does not mean that, right? He, said, he says to triumph over depression. So th- there, there is still going to be a battle. There is still going to be effort. And um, I want to talk to you about something that we talked about. We won't go too far so we don't make anybody mad. But, you know, this is my show, so we can do it anyway. Um, (laughs) I want to talk to you about, because, you know, I speak a lot to this next generation. And you and I talked about this yesterday. Um, And I made a post about this, doctor. I said that we need to teach resiliency. 
I'm alarmed at the amount of, of attempted suicides that are happening with our young generation. And I need moms and dads to hear somebody who's been through depression and, and it's come out on the other side. So what can we do if we're seeing signs in our kids um, that, man, they're depressed and they got the world by the tail? But what, what should parents be on the lookout for and how can they help navigate that, doctor? Great. I, I, I just want to uh, preface that by the fact that among 10 to 14 year olds, suicide is the number two cause of death. Listen, folks. And among and among those 15 to 24 or years old, it is the number three cause of death. So let that sink in. True. This suicide is a killer among our young people. And so what, what they should be on the lookout for are some of the warning signs. Some of the warning signs can be kids begin to withdraw. They don't want to interact. Their behavior is radically different. They're much more irritable. And again, teenagers in general can be irritable. We know that, but that is a drastic change. They begin to give things away to say goodbye. Yeah. They could, uh, changes in their appetite, changes in their sleep patterns. They... They could have, a, again, a change in mood. They might start using uh, substances, abusing substances, or if they're already using something, now it's an increased use of this. Yeah. Uh, they may, as I said, begin to get, they give things away. Right. Uh, saying goodbye is, is there. One of the biggest predictors of suicide is somebody who's attempted suicide. True. And, and something to be aware of is the individual who talks about death yeah they might be drawing on it they may give a post about it but they seem fixated about death and uh, uh, a high risk time is when there's been a, a suicide in the family mm. or a friend yeah or uh, somebody that's close to them or even a celebrity maybe that they identify with Ooh. Okay. These can be high risk times or there's been a major loss, a death, or with a kid, it might be a relationship breakup. So these can be high risk times, uh, uh, chronic stress, uh, major e events like this. So things to be thinking about in our, our kids that what puts them at risk and what are some of these warning signs? Yeah. And you alluded to this, this lack of resilience, so hopelessness. Yeah. And, and what contributes, in my mind, I'm convinced that one of the things that contributes to this lack of resilience is the way these kids have been raised. The helicopter parents. Listen. The, the hovering parents. Uh, everybody gets a trophy. Listen. Everybody's a winner. We don't keep score. Listen. So I'm sorry. That's not life. Right. You know that. I know that. Go into the workforce, get in the military. Guess what? Everybody is not going to uh, <laughs> get promoted at the same level. Can't everybody, everybody be a colonel. <laughs> that's right. Everybody's not going to win that game. Yeah. Why do we like the uh, sports? Because somebody's a winner. Somebody's a loser. Yeah. You know, we, we love that because it's an analogy of life. The yes. Battle. Yeah. And somebody comes out on top. And that's the reality of life. Life. And one of the things I love about wrestling is you get knocked on your back and wrestling teaches you how to get back up. And mm -hmm. in life, we need to let kids struggle and fail when the stakes are low. So they know they can get back up and it's going to be all right. Yeah. That failure is okay. You're yes. going to survive it. You're going to get through it. And so that's one of the things that I've been concerned about for many years is this idea kids haven't been allowed to fail that's powerful i talk about this the gift of struggle doctor it, it is a gift and when i look back at all that i went through all that melinda and i went through the homelessness the hunger the pain the bouncing around from social services group homes and foster homes it was like that little chick pushing through that egg right it, it, it's a struggle, doctor. It's a struggle, <laughs> but it's a gift that if you just, if you keep. And so, man, I, he just spoke words of life to us, guys. You know, 
Uh, and I learned that with my kids. I've got seven children, seven grandchildren. And sometimes one of the greatest thing, one of the greatest two letter words I could have told them was no. Right? Because not everybody's going to tell you yes. And let's see how you navigate this no to turn it into a better yes down the road. Whoa, that's powerful. So you got to go to, <laughs> to you got to go to transformedtoughguys.com to connect with Dr. Skip Mondragon. He's a he's a retired army colonel, a a physician, an MD, a 26 uh, year army veteran, a 36 month combat veteran, and a world wrestling amateur champion. I've got his book. You need to get his book too. Get it in your hands and then gift it to someone else because he's got some very, very practical keys and truths in here. Of course, I got to have him back so we can go over some more chapters. I told him we couldn't do it in 30 minutes. Look, we're seven minutes over, doctor. We couldn't do it. <laughs> I knew we couldn't do it. But that's what that's what life is like when, you, when you're talking to a friend. And so, doctor, what I'd like for you to do before we close is I'd like you to give a word, as you know, a word of encouragement to our listeners. There's a whole pot potpourri of folks that listen to this show. Of course, you're a sponsor. He's one of our platinum sponsors. He's been a platinum sponsor of this show almost since we connected. And uh, Dr. Skip saw what we were doing, and he said, you know what? I want to financially support you guys. And we're very, very blessed by that, doctor. We don't take it lightly, and we thank you for it. So I'd like to give you the floor. I'd like you to speak to our diverse audience tonight and give them your, your heart and word of encouragement. Thank you, Chris. Hmm. Proverbs 17.22 says, before I say that, let me tell you, that verse I have prescribed, Proverbs 17.22, to thousands of patients. I have written it and delivered that prescription. And I tell patients with this, you, with this medication, it has no bad side effects, no drug-to-drug -drug interaction, and you can't overdose on it. Proverbs 17.22 says, a merry heart doeth good like a medicine, <laughs> but a broken spirit yes. drieth up the soul. And when I was depressed, had a broken spirit. And one of the ways that you combat that is with a merry heart. Yeah. Laughter is good medicine. So my friends, listeners, those of you who struggle each and every day, take a healthy dose, a hearty dose of this medication and laugh. Laugh. It's good medicine. That's powerful. What a great prescription. We got a prescription from the doctor, ladies and gentlemen. Dr. Skip Mondragon, the author of Depression is Not for Wimps. You can get your copy on Amazon. It's in the post. It's in the chat. So go look. Go, man, just go get yourself a copy today. You can connect with the doctor at transformedtoughguys.com. Transformedtoughguys.com. So, Colonel, uh, Consider yourself on the schedule far more often than once every six months. Okay, <laughs> Colonel? Uh, Thank you, Chris. We really uh, appreciate you. Congratulations. I appreciate you. Congratulations on your TEDx talk. I, like you said, God said this is just the beginning. He's sought after a sought after speaker, a skilled speaker, uh, and a, a man of God, a minister of the gospel. And, uh, and, and to top it all off, He's from Texas. <laughs> or live. So that's the icing on the cake. And so, uh, doctor, we love and appreciate you. You are a part of the Impact in Life 24-7 family. We look forward to talking to you again real soon. Okay, doctor? Thank you, Chris. Love you and love your staff. You guys are doing amazing things, and I'm delighted to be a part of it, Chris. And I look forward to chatting on your show again. All right. Thank you, doctor. Have a good night. Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, that is it for uh, our busy broadcast week. We are done. And uh, thank you, Greg, for – Greg had to swoop in from his job. And, man, you know, he could he could very easily – he could very easily have the, had the night off. And he, he 
didn't. He didn't take the night off. He said, man, I'm going to be here with you, King. So what a blessing. Mike, same thing. Mike got held up with some some things, but he found a way to get back around, circle back, and be on the, the live. These these men are amazing. Katrina uh, was with our, our guest in the pre-show tonight. Danny, who is just an amazing human being, was there for us to greet Dr. Skip. When I tell you, ladies and gentlemen, that the quality and caliber of people that we have on this show is truly immense. I mean that. Um, you know, there, there, there's, there's certain commands that are, you know, commanded by colonels that they have. They oversee thousands of people and they have years of experience and knowledge and et cetera. And we bring those types of people right to your right to your living room. And we do that because we understand that these issues that we that we talk about matter. You know, Greg, you're right, brother. Quality. It is truly quality. We had to redo the studios and get everything back in line. And then now our show is booked all the way up until the end of the year. I put that in Slack for you guys to see, Greg, that just to just to get everything back together, let everyone know we're back in business. And now. I think we got two open slots, two or three open slots left for the rest of the year for Impacting Life 24-7. So look for us Monday night, Tuesday night, and Thursday night at 7 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time. If you would like to become a sponsor to help see what we are bringing to the nations, all you have to do is go to clkingspeaker.com. It's not high pressure, and it surely isn't a lot of money. We've got three sponsorship levels, $1, $5, and $15, our gold, silver, and platinum sponsors. And these people help us to continue to provide great content, bring in great guests, continue to have a quality experience where people want to be and those want to view it. So I'd love for you to go to clkingspeaker.com. Thank you for putting that there, Greg. I just want you to know that, man, we're blessed to do this. We're blessed to be a blessing. And I hope that something that you heard tonight, something that you heard from Dr. Skip Mondragon, something that he spoke into your life, I I hope that it helps you. I hope that it helped you. And if you need to dive in deeper, just go to transformedtoughguys.com. Reach out to Skip, get a copy of his book. And just, and just understand that somebody who was a colonel, somebody who was a combat veteran, somebody who was a world wrestling champion still battled depression. So don't feel bad if, you, if you're in a position of authority, if you're in a position of leadership, if people are depending on you. Don't feel bad if, if you need help. The reason why we should feel bad is when we feel like we can't ask for help. And so we love you. We appreciate you, and uh, we thank you so much, Greg. You can have any slot on the show you want. <laughs> we would love for you to become a sponsor. Just very simply go to clkingspeaker.com, scroll down to the bottom, and click the link and become a part of this movement. We have sponsors all across the country uh, who help us every single month. None of them have dropped off. Every sponsor that comes on, Greg, none of them, none of them withdraw their sponsorship. There's a couple reasons for that. Number one, because it's not it's not breaking the bank. We didn't ask for five hundred dollar sponsorships. Number two, they believe and see what we're doing. And so every dollar that comes in, we put it back into the programming of this show and uh, impacting life. Twenty four seven LLC is doing that every single day. So that's it for us for this week. We'll be back Monday night. Right here in the High Definition Studios with myself, Greg, Mike, Danny, Katrina, Vera, for providing you high quality content that can make an impact on your life. Very simply. All right. Until that time, enjoy your weekend. We'll talk to you again soon. Thanks, Greg.